Hey there, Alex here. When the Mi A1 was first released, it was a phone that I could easily recommend to most folks. It's cheap, the hardware is decent, and it's part of the Android One program. So it has a near stock Android experience and relatively quick software updates. The formula to create the Mi A1 was simple. Take the Mi 5X and change the software. The Mi A2 is pretty much the same thing here. It's basically a Mi 6X with the Android One software experience, so we have exactly the same hardware specifications and design. This is a really good thing for the most part. First of all, I really like the design and build quality of the phone. I know it's pretty plain looking and it bears a strong resemblance with a lot of other devices out there, but I still very much prefer metal over glass. The slight curve at the sides along with the slim body makes it feel really nice in hand. It does wobble a little because of the camera bump, but so do a lot of other phones these days. The display looks quite good with decent colours and contrast, definitely a big upgrade over the Mi A1. It gets dim enough in low light and just bright enough outdoors. It's not the best looking LCD I've seen, but it's definitely good enough for its price. It's also using an 18 by 9 aspect ratio, which means smaller bezels and no more capacitive buttons in a reversed layout. There is only one speaker at the bottom and it can sound a little distorted at higher volumes, but it is able to get really loud. For general media consumption, it's still a good enough experience. I also have no complaints about the performance of the phone too. Snapdragon 660 is one of the higher end mid-tier chipsets, so the speed and responsiveness of the phone is really good, especially when it's running near stock Android. In fact, when I compared it with the first generation Google Pixel, the Mi A2 seems to launch apps a bit quicker. Even for gaming, it was able to run all the games I play with ease. The only minor drawback is the slightly smaller 3000mAh battery, which for me is just about a day of use with around 4-5 to five hours of screen on time. You can probably get a bit more with lighter usage, so I would say that it's decent but not amazing. All in all, I think most folks will be very happy with the performance of this phone, especially when you consider the price tag. As I've mentioned earlier, the Mi A2 runs a near stock version of Android. We do get an extra option in settings for sharing diagnostic data, and it does install a couple of Xiaomi apps automatically after setup, but that's about it. Other than the smoother software experience, the other benefit of being an Android One device is the relatively quick software updates. I say relatively because the update is still being handled by Xiaomi, and sometimes there are delays but on the whole, it should still be better than most mainstream manufacturers. Having received an upgrade in the camera hardware, I was really looking forward to see what the Mi A2 has to offer. After spending some time with it, I'm happy to report that it does not disappoint. The camera is able to capture nicely detailed images in good lighting, and for more challenging lighting conditions, Auto HDR kicks in reliably. The color reproduction is also pretty consistent and looks quite natural. The phone has a secondary camera that helps with extreme low light shots through the use of pixel beaming. It seems like the phone is combining data from both sensors to produce a cleaner looking image. So even in low light, the camera performs admirably as well. The front camera is another highlight of the phone with a whopping 20 megapixel sensor. The exposure is a little higher than I would have liked, but it produces pleasing looking shots even in dimmer lighting conditions. It comes with an LED flash too if you need a selfie in the dark for some reason. Video recording is pretty decent too, and there is electronic stabilization for 1080p recording. On the downside, I do wish that the shutter response could be a bit better, but overall, this is already a better camera than I was expecting for a phone at this price. By the way, everything I took with the Mi A2 can be found in a link below. Remember in the beginning when I said that having the same hardware as the Mi 6X is mostly a good thing? So let's talk about the few minor things that are not as good. For some reason, they removed the headphone jack as well as the micro SD card slot, both of which were available on the Mi A1. I don't really mind not having those options, but I do see the appeal of having them, especially on a budget-friendly device. Something I do mind though is the lack of NFC again. I use mobile payments quite frequently, which makes using the Mi A2 a little less convenient for me. Overall, these are relatively minor shortcomings considering how good the rest of the phone is and how much it costs. The design of the phone is really nice, the performance is exceedingly good, the camera punches above its weight, and the software experience is really enjoyable. 
So if you're okay with the few minor shortcomings that I've mentioned, the Mi A2 is definitely worth taking a look at. Thanks for watching my review of the Xiaomi Mi A2. If you've enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more reviews in the future. Thanks again and see you guys on the next one.